Good guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company down under in New Zealand. Behind me, I've got a Toyota Surf. Some of the world knows them as a, a forerunner. We did get a forerunner here in New Zealand. Um, it was like a 2.8 non-turbo diesel with uh, the small uh, gearbox in them, which was quite an interesting model. Don't see a lot of them. Most of the forerunners we see are import, and a lot of them are, are V6. But we see a heap of surfs. And they come in as a generally as a diesel, but also as the petrol. In this video, we're going to talk about hose. Not about the surf, it's about the hose. Now make sure that you get the E and the S in the right way. Because otherwise we're talking about a completely different kind of hose. We do need to know the difference between the two. One's a piece of rubber, and the other, you need a piece of rubber to keep you from catching anything. Toyota Surf, Forerunner, fitted with a 1UZ. The one behind me was a bloody mess. I'll find some photos of how it started. It was disgusting. No prep done. The wiring was multiple versions of people trying to sort it out and oh, it gave me a headache. Let's get into this engine bay. Let's have a quick look and we'll talk about those hose. Hoses. Hoses. That sounds quite different to hose. Hoses. We probably should look at the outside. See, it's a forerunner or a surf. Gen 2. Looks like that. Oh, engine bay looks like that. Here we have it. Now this is a, a Gen 2. We don't normally say them as Gen 2s. I, I'd call this a 130. Um, N130 Gen 2 Surf or Forerunner. You'll notice here on the original pictures, it looked like a bird is nesting. Now, that's tidied. I still have a piece of loom to run up to the, to the wipers there. The front loom isn't in yet, but it'll still look pretty good and neat and tidy. The engine, it's been rewired. Individual coils going through. It's a Gen 2 engine, Gen 2 1UZ. Aftermarket ECU, so it's got a, a different stepper on it. It is an auto. So I'm working on a video showing how to wire a stock ECU to run the auto. We've tidied up around this side. And we're looking, looking pretty good there. So different kinds of hose. This one, if we uh, manage to zoom in, so this one says transmission fluid, and that is fantastic hose for transmission fluid, running oil through it, really, really good. Problem was, it was fitted to the brake booster. Hmm. It was the vacuum source to the brake booster. The brake booster goes through here, along, and there's the fitting on the back of the engine, back of the plenum, right there. So transmission hose is not suitable. It needs a hose that has got some crush, won't, won't suck, suck in. It won't be pushed in by the atmospheric pressure working on the outside of the hose, which will be greater than the vacuum or lack of pressure on the inside. It needs some strength to stop it drawing in. 
So I use this air brake hose. That's, that's much better hose. If you're doing a conversion, don't forget to check there's a one-way valve in that system. Up to your lips. <laughs> Suck. You know, that, back to that hose thing. And blow. <laughs> to see if there's a one-way valve in it. So this particular vehicle, the next piece of hose it had uh, was this piece here. It had a Gen 1 fuel rail. So the fuel pressure regulator was, was on this side. And this hose ran from here, ran across the engine to that point there. You'll notice that I might have changed it a little bit. Um, there's the charcoal canister, the breather for the fuel tank. And its piece of hose runs perfectly down onto there. So that is not the return line that this piece of hose was run to. So the return line doesn't have to be high pressure hose, it can be just a normal piece of fuel resistant hose. And on this one, this is the return line. This was a V6 version, so there's your the return line. And it runs to the fuel pressure regulator at the back of the engine. Gen 2, Gen 1's at the front, Gen 2's at the back. I actually used a piece of high pressure EFI line for that. It's not going to be any issue and I don't have much of the other stuff. It's easier for me just to keep the one because that one will cover all options. The inlet hose for the fuel line right here has to be high pressure line. You'll see I've brought it up, put it directly into that dampener at the back, which we can't see from this angle. If I go around here, there we go. Simple. Charcoal canister, the breather for the fuel tank. An emission hose. Generally a fuel hose is okay there. Doesn't have to be high pressure, can be low pressure. It also needs a vacuum source. So I've run some vacuum hoses. Let me get rid of that extra fuel line. I've come off the top nipple. Yes, I did say nipple. Brought it round to the VSV, the Purge VSV. Goes in the side closest to the plug, out the other side and over to the charcoal canister with the one-way valve in it. Lots of guys think because it's emissions, they want to take it off. They want to take everything emissions off. I don't like smelly petrol fumes in a vehicle. And that thing gets rid of them. So I generally put them on most of the conversions that I do. We also need them for some of the legalities over here. It's just easier to put them in because I don't like that petrol smell. It's yucky. That's the technical term, yucky. Hose, hose, oh, four wheel drive. We need to do the four wheel drive line. This one has got ADD, auto diff disconnect on the front, on the front diff. Um, so it needs a vacuum source. I've run it through to the front of the plenum because we don't have the idle up on this one. Aftermarket computer should handle the idle up. So I've put it through the center. Let's have a look. So these are our solenoids for the four-wheel drive, the ADD. There's an on and an off. So I've run the vacuum line in here. And you see I've tucked it along here. It actually comes straight through the center and comes to that point there. There is a one-way valve in it again. It's, it's actually tucked in behind the solenoids. It's tucked in behind here. There's the one-way valve. And if we come under here, under the guard, there's a reservoir canister tucked right here, and then it runs back to the solenoids. It then has, from the solenoids there, it's got a pair of um, hoses that heads down to the diff. OK, 
Okay, so that just needs to be normal vacuum hose. Other normal vacuum hose is the fuel pressure regulator. Right down in here, and I've run that to the factory spot on the back of the plenum. Uh, no solenoid on this one, even though it probably had one factory being LS400. EGR is one emission I get rid of. Japanese plate on it. I've probably got the EGR down here. Oops. So that, that was originally on this vehicle, that's the EGR. And you'll notice that this tube, this hose, oh, ah, that is solid. Whereas this one is nice and supple. This is a brand new genuine piece of uh, tubing and they just, they're lovely. And look, they fit nice, they do everything right. Water hoses need to be water hoses. Water hoses need to be water hoses, same as the top radiator hose. And we have another breather tucked over here. I've sold all my genuine ones. I can't get any more at a reasonable price. So again, I'm using a vacuum, multi-purpose hose, fuel and oil and uh, vapor resistant. And I use the same for my hose running from my throttle body to my idle speed control whether it's a standard one or aftermarket. Won't suck in, lovely. This vehicle has got an aftermarket computer in it. It's got a Link ECU. So we've got a map sensor, normal vacuum line. It comes in under the plenum, pops out there. Now we also have that breather thingy. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can get down to it. The idle up. Here we go, there is the idle up valve for the power steering on this particular model. So if you're running that, good quality vacuum hose is fine, I would run that there. That idle up is another unit that people seem to just want to get rid of. If I'm running an auto, I try to run them, especially if it's got big wheels. Auto, big wheels, standard computer, just so much nicer with the idle up valve. Just, just tickles the idle up just a smidge, and and that's a little bit smidge, a little bit. It's a Kiwiism. Um, so it just brings that idle up so much nicer. Have I got all the hoses? Breather for the fuel tank, yes. Fuel hose, yep. EFI hose. PCV valve hose, yes, breather, IAC hose. Oh, there's a piece of hose going to the intake, big one. That one's a piece of silicon. Uh, intake on this. Power steer. Air conditioning. Air conditioning needs to be a proper air conditioning hose. Yep. Power steering. A high pressure for our power steer. And this one does the big loopy loop, so it comes down to here, into the factory stuff, it's running along here. All that needs to be proper power steer line, with an operating pressure of about 800 to 1000 PSI, and probably a burst pressure of about 3000 I would I'd be guessing there. The supply line to the pump, if it's running an external reservoir, and not all of them do, some of them run the reservoir directly on the pump. Needs to be oil resistant hose. I use, um, again, this is like a universal tubing. Works really, really well. The return line. Now we can use some transmission line. That was fuel line. Transmission line. Transmission cooler line is perfect for the return. And I also recommend a cooler in your power steer line. It'll save your pumps, make them last a bit longer. Again, if you've got those big wheels. I think we've got them all. Yep. Yep, I think that's everything now. So when you're doing your conversions, 
Oh, heater hoses. Oh. So before that, the, the other one, of course, I was talking about radiator hoses. Well, there's also the heater hoses at the back. This one came in without heater hoses on it because it had swapped from a Gen 1 engine to a Gen 2 engine, and they didn't swap the Gen 1 rear um, crossover tube on. So the heater hoses that were on this vehicle originally didn't fit. It's fought me all the way. It, it also had a US left-hand drive throttle body on it too. And that was never going to connect up to the throttle. So we're getting there. And it's it's been a good challenge. And we've now, I think, got all the correct hose is hoses onto it. Laid out and working like it should. So the moral of the story, use the correct hoses when you're doing your conversions and, and prep your engine and wire it nicely. Now this information, guys will sometimes look at it and go, hey, can you do the same thing for a conversion into a 200SX or a 240SX or a 180SX? They're all the same SX. Just slightly different numbers in front. The information applies to all conversions that you do. You're putting all the same stuff in. They have a brake booster. They have emission systems, breathers for the fuel tank. They have PCV valves. They have idle air controls, if you're doing it properly. You have power steering on a lot of vehicles and water hoses. Just because this is on a surf or a forerunner doesn't mean it doesn't apply to other vehicles. So, use the correct hose. Don't get your spelling wrong because that gives you a whole different kind of hose. And I hope that's been helpful, and we'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.